Hello guys, how are we all doing today? Uh, today I just want to make a short video, or somewhat long video, on the care sheet for a wolf spider. So let's get started. Okay, the three species I have kept before are H. carolinensis, H. heluo, and H. aspersa, which is what I have right now. Um, so these are the three species I have somewhat kind of experience with. Others, there are many out there, so, you know, take your pick. Male or female? These are two very bad drawings, but they are pretty easy to tell. Uh, the pedipulps of the male are gigantic, and uh, that's what you use for mating. So the male has really big pedipulps. The female has really small pedipulps, and uh, mine's a female, so I'll show you later. It has very tiny pedipulps. Uh, let's go to enclosures and substrates. For a small sling spiderling, as you can call them, a small container like this is perfect for them. This used for, to be for maraschino cherries, but you can also buy your own jars at Walmart or Sam's Club or something. Um, for a medium-sized individual, you can use a kind of container like this. Um, it's a very nice container, and it can also be used for housing arboreal spiders. But yeah, once again, it's a good enclosure. You could also use a container like this. This is a very good container. You could poke holes on the side, and uh, it'll be very useful for keeping wolf spiders. And this used to be for uh, cookies. So uh, you get yourself a treat of cookies, and you get your nice little container for wolf spiders. For a somewhat uh, larger juvenile, you can use enclosures like this. Uh, it's a uh, Sterilite uh, tub. I think it's one gallon. Uh, you could get them at the dollar store for very cheap prices, and that's a very good thing for uh, wolf spiders. I keep mine in a very large 10 gallon tank. It's technically a little bit too big, but you know, it likes it and uh, it gives it more space to free roam itself on. Substrates. Um, most people use. Uh, Ecol Earth, designed for reptiles, and that's a pretty good choice. You can also use um, peat moss, uh, which is what I usually use. Peat moss is a very good uh, kind of substrate because it keeps the earth nice and dry, which is what wolf spiders usually like. You can also use potting soil or vermiculite, and those are very good uh, choices. You should stay away from wood chips, like the mulch that you use for gardening. That you should stay away from because it's just not uh, good for the spider. The spider can cut itself on the uh, mulch. Although wolf spiders, they tend to hurt themselves less than, say, a tarantula on uh, mulch. So if you want to use wood chips, you should use Douglas fir bark that you could buy at the um, pet stores or maybe even Walmart if they sell them near your, uh, where, near where you live. So very good choices. Now. I keep mine, again, as a leaf litter, shredded leaf litter and peat moss mixture. It's a nice little kind of compacted dirt uh, that the spider can still dig on, but it's still fluffy on the top and on the bottom it's nice and compacted so it keeps the thing in shape, which is very nice. Uh, decorations, you can add like branches and plants in there, although it's not necessary because spiders don't use them very much. Mine does, so you might want to think about that. Uh, you might want to give it some cover, like a, uh, a rock or a piece of cork bark or a big leaf like this where it could hide under or dig into. So uh, that's pretty much all for the uh, substrates and decorations part. Okay. Availability in the wild, you usually can catch them in uh, most places. In Kansas, where I live, they're everywhere outside, so you can easily find one, and if you can't find one, sometimes they sell them online, although I see more people selling tarantulas than wolf spiders, for obvious reasons, but um, you can still sometimes find them online, and the best way, though, is to catch your own outside. Uh, if you're worried about, like, restrictions and stuff, you might want to check uh, online about 
what you can catch and what you can't, although where I live there is no rule against catching wolf spiders and I don't think there is a rule about catching spiders. So you can easily catch your own from the wild and most of those species you can easily find, especially the H. carolinensis and the H. aspersa where I live. Where I live, the carolinensis is the easiest to find. Aspersa is somewhat harder, but you could still find it. Okay, feeding, watering. Um, my individual, I keep a small water dish, nice and moist, and I fill it with Kleenex paper towels and, or other stuff like that to keep the spider from falling, falling in and drowning. Uh, some people don't care about that and most of the time it's okay but it just gives it something for the spider to grip onto as it drinks water and contrary to popular belief the spider doesn't suck the water with its fangs by jabbing its fangs into the paper towels so the paper towels aren't necessary it's just something to prevent uh, any problems it's not always needed but I like to keep it on the safe side feeding um, Depending on the size of your uh, spider, you can give it anything from mealworms to crickets. Uh, small, small individuals, you could feed fruit flies or laboratory flies or maybe an occasional ant. But larger species, you might want to give it adult crickets, which is usually about an inch in length. Or you can also give it... Um, a small grasshopper or a small katydid that'll also work uh, you usually uh, can find those outside or you could buy your own from the pet store so both works um, the spiders they tend to uh, have less molting problems than tarantulas so wolf spiders are always a good pet for you to keep if you always run into molting problems with tarantulas. Or if you have never kept a tarantula, wolf spider is a good spar starter spider for you to try. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for uh, feeding. And uh, you might want to feed about once every, uh, every two days for small slings that are growing. And for adults like mine, you can pretty much edge on the once every two weeks mark, so that'll always work. Um, and other than that, there really isn't anything you could do about molting problems, and also um, you might want to keep the enclosure somewhat humid during the molting process, and you can see good signs of molting. Uh, when the spider loses its appetite and all that so I'll talk about that in another video so yeah we'll do with deal with that later uh, said feeding watering cost um, if you decide to buy one online or if you even can find one online usually they're not too expensive um, there it's just how it is usually not expensive and um, male or female you would uh, go for the female because the males live really short uh, usually the male lives for a few months a year at the most females they could go up to three to five years so uh, you know it really depends what you think and some females they live very long five years others they only live a year but as a whole they're still longer than the life of a male so you usually should want the female but if you decide to breed uh, wolf spiders it's pretty simple and uh, it's pretty easy usually the male doesn't get eaten occasionally he might but either way if you decide to breed them you will have to have a male and a female and uh, one thing that's really interesting about the spider is that you probably already know this if you're watching this video and that is uh, the wolf spiders the females they carry the egg sacs on the back and um, when the spiders hatch, the young spiders, they actually will hatch and crawl onto the back of the female, and the female will uh, carry them around for about a week before they finally uh, go off on their own. So that's a very good motherly thing to do, I guess you could say. Um, temperature, you know, anywhere from 60 degrees to 80 degrees will be fine. Uh, lower than that, the spider will usually go into like a hibernation mode where it won't eat and um, above 80 degrees they usually will also hide away and not come out um, so 
If you are on the lower temperature side, don't feed them as much. If you're on the higher temperature side, feed them more. Okay, um, I guess that's pretty much it for uh, the care sheet video. Now I'll just um, I'll just show you the uh, spiders. Um, I have one right now. The other little sling that I had died, so I'm just gonna have to show you one of them. Uh, let me grab my flashlight here. And um, yeah, hold on a sec. Um, you probably already seen this just a few days ago, but she is right there on this little branch. Uh, try to get a good view on it. It's right there. Uh, the flashlight's not going going through really well. Hold on a second. There we go. Right there. If, it, if, if the camera can focus. There we go. Right there. Alright. Hold on a second. Let me get a better view on it. I'm just gonna do this. Open the top. Camera is not really uh, wanting to focus, and the spider left. That's right there. If you can see it. Right there. So pretty cool. Bursa, and um, there you go. You guys saw it. I couldn't really show you the pedipulps, but who cares about that for now? All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the care sheet video, and um, thanks for watching. Bye.